Oh, hello there. You would like to hear about the great orator Henry Clay? Well, first, let me finish this novel. Ah, yes, quite engrossing. Now let's talk about his speech before the House of Representatives on February 6, 1850. Henry Clay, uh, known as the Great Compromise, a really famous political uh, order of his time, he was very important for being a founder of the Whig Party, and really quintessential in that triumvirate that fought against the ideals of Andrew Jackson. At this point, when he's giving the speech in, uh, on February 6th, 1850, for the House of Representatives, he's really done a lot in his political career up to this point. He's beginning to look back and say, what have I done, and where is the current state of the Union? He really fought against uh, any sectional conflict that he felt threatened the Union, and thought that there were current threats to the Union, and that there was things that the nation should be doing to prevent these conflicts. In this speech, he really prevents, uh, presents what he believes to be those greatest threats, and proposes possible solutions. Now, just to give a little context on this speech, Henry Clay gave this speech uh, on February 6, 1850, and it was really short-term and a direct, direct response to political uproar that had really started in the House of Representatives. A direct example that could really be cited is a verbal exchange between Edward Stanley of South Carolina and several other congressmen. Now, Edward Stanley, being from South Carolina, truly believed that Slavery was really essential. It was really, uh, really an integral part of Southern culture, and for that reason, he then believed that the spread of slavery was just and right, and that new territories should definitely be inundated with the institution of slavery. Now, uh, just one more piece of context. Uh, before giving this speech, Henry Clay met with uh, fellow Whig uh, Daniel Webster. At this point. You know, Clay was in a later part of his life, and also, Daniel Webster was nearly at the age of uh, 68. Uh, and, you know, Clay and Webster were really prior political opponents, but when they founded the Whig Party together, it really created a common bond between them. And they grew to have very similar political ideals. And... When Clay and Webster met, they really discussed what they believed to be similar issues facing the Union, and together kind of formulated what they believed to be the best possible solution to, the, to these issues. Now, we'll go into discussing really the first points of Clay's speech, where he does kind of glorify this great Union that he worked so hard to keep unified and prevent from being destroyed by these sectional conflicts that would eventually get the best of the Union. Now Clay said, Our territory was limited chiefly and principally to that bordering upon the Atlantic Ocean, and that which includes the southern shores of the interior lakes of our country. Our territory now extends from the northern provinces of Great Britain to the Rio Grande and the Gulf of Mexico, the largest extent of territory under one government. We came out of war without the loss of any honor, whatever. We emerged from it gloriously. Clay saw this expanding United States, and he really felt great pride for what the nation had really worked so, so hard and long to build, where he says, that even in war, the nation is really able to prevail so triumphantly. But this really segues really well into one of the trends that Clay focuses really, really finely on in his speech, and that is that the expansion and uh, finding of new territory is really quite a very big danger to the United States. And the reason that he sees... Uh, that expansion is a very big threat to the United States is that it brings up sectional possible sectional conflict 
that can occur between slave states and free states over the viability of really creating a new slave state or new free state. And, you know, he kind of sees this as a big issue that needs to be addressed. And for this reason, he's re he was really against the expansion of the United States in the fashion that it was expanding. Really after the Mexican-American War, the United States had won all this territory when it was ceded to the United States from Mexico. And, uh, you know, under President Zachary Taylor, uh, this, ex this expansion was really exploding. And so Clay kind of saw the other side that many people really believed in this ideal of manifest destiny, but he kind of saw it, saw manifest destiny as a danger. And so now in the next part of Clay's speech, he'll outline what he believed could be possible solutions to this expansion and uh, in, uh, introduction of new territory into the United States, really uh, existing in just a few points that he made. And Clay says, quote, Well, the first question which naturally arises is, supposing the Union to be dissolved, having all causes of grievance which are complained of, how far will dissolution furnish a remedy for those grievances? If the Union is to be dissolved for any existing causes, it will be dissolved because slavery is interdicted or not allowed to be introduced into the ceded territories, because slavery is threatened to be abolished in the District of Columbia, and because fugitive slaves are not returned as, in my opinion, they ought to be, and restored to their masters. These, I believe, will be the causes, if there be any causes, which can lead to the direful event to which I have referred. Now, I asked Clay said this, He's really talking about the main issues, these main issues that I, mentioned, that I mentioned earlier, that he really sees as the issues that would lead to dissolution within this union that he has worked too, so hard to uh, create, uh, maintain uh, unity within. And later on, um, Clay would be one of the uh, main, uh, main creators of the Compromise of 1850, and um, this is actually the first time where he presents those ideas that uh, he would use in this, that compromise. And he really um, predicted very well um, the issues that would lead to, uh, lead to dissolution, and really addresses those right here, where he talks about um, the expansion of slavery into territory, new territories of the United States, and the uh, institution of slavery within the District of Columbia, and then also uh, the fugitive slave law, fugitive slave laws within the United States, and how he believes that those should be strengthened, and they actually would end up be uh, would would end up getting stra strengthened within the Compromise of 1850. Now, as Clay moves on in his speech, he really uh, shifts to a point where he talks about this true fear that he has about the dissolution of the United States and really starts talking about the consequences and in this next part of his speech um, he really implores and implores for the sectional conflicts within, this, uh, within the United States to end and says that these issues if to be resolved would end that, those sectional conflicts that's really where he moves to next. Anne Clay says, quote, But I must take occasion to say that in my opinion there is no right on the part of one or more of the states to secede from the Union. War and the dissolution of the Union are identical and inseparable. There can be no dissolution of the Union except by consent or by war. No one can expect in the existing state of things that that consent would be given and war is the only alternative by which a dissolution could be accomplished. 
Now, at this point in his speech, Clay really does become more fearful and does try and act cautionary of um, about the possible war that dissolution really could bring. He does see um, very, uh, very well predicted um, he is that the future of the United States, if dissolution was to occur, would um, would be a future of war and destruction. And being um, 1850, this is very, uh, very visionary for his time, seeing that these sectional conflicts, if not controlled how Clay suggests, could really escalate. And, and Clay is um, from Kentucky, and at this point in the United States, uh, allegiance to a, st uh, a state really often takes precedence over allegiance to the United States, and the fact that Clay is working around these issues of slavery and really trying to find a solution that's not as biased as many of the other ones of the time really shows that Clay has uh, has an allegiance to the United States and really embodies these this ideal of an American of the American man and really um, values what he what he is as an American and really that's one of the main things that can be taken from this speech that Clay um, did do things for the South and did do things for the North uh, did things for Democrats, did things for Whigs but in the end he embodied what it was to be an American and that is truly what allowed him to create these great compromises